Okay, um, so on 28, we have cosecant theta minus 1 times cosecant theta plus 1 um, equal cotangent squared theta. So um, what we want to do is work with the left side. And so on this one, you're going to need to remember um, your Pythagorean identity having to do with those. Um, and it's cotangent squared x plus 1 equal cosecant squared x. And so on this one, remember, we want to keep our goal in mind um, to change the left side only into the right side. OK, so what we do is, um, for 28, do FOIL. So cosecant times cosecant is cosecant squared. <laughs> then you do your plus cosecant minus cosecant, which cancels. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. And then you get a negative 1 equal cotangent squared. And then if we solve for cosecant squared, we would move this 1 over. So it would be cosecant squared minus 1. And so that actually um, is the end. So cotangent squared um, equal cotangent squared, which works out. It's just if you move your 1 over and solve for cotangent squared, it's already matched. So it's like very easy on that one. Can I do what? Okay, so just minus one, minus one. So you get cotangent squared x equal cosecant squared x minus one. And then we changed um, cosecant squared minus one to be cotangent. So that's just a substitution step from here to here. So we did FOIL first, and then we did substitution. Oh, the FOIL. OK, that's what you meant. OK, I understand. OK, so um, cosecant theta minus 1, cosecant theta plus 1. So on FOIL, um, we do first times first. So that'd be these. Cosecant times cosecant is cosecant squared. And then for the outsides, that'd be these. Yes, so that's plus cosecant theta. <coughs> and then for the inside, it'd be these, so minus cosecant theta. And then for the last, it'd be negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1. And so what you can always just remember is anytime it's minus and plus of the same thing, your middles are going to cancel. So your cosecant theta minus cosecant theta cancels. And so that's how come we just got um, cosecant squared minus 1. OK, so that's 28. Um, let's see, 32 is next. On 32, we have 1 minus cosine squared theta times 1 plus cotangent squared theta equal 1. Okay, so it's just going to simplify to a number. And so if you keep that as a goal in mind, um, then the best way to approach this is don't do FOIL. You want to do uh, you want to use substitution. Use substitution. And so for our first one, we have sine squared x plus cosine squared x equal one which means if we solve for sine squared and move this over, we get sine squared for the front. So we're just basically replacing 1 minus cosine squared with sine squared. And on the other one, um, our identity involving cotangent is cotangent squared 
I'll just put x over here. Cotangent squared x plus 1 equal cosecant squared. By the way, the 1 and the cotangent squared could change sides like they do here. It doesn't matter. And we're just going to change it into cosecant squared. And if you figure out to do that step first, then it's going to be very simple from there. Um, you're going to just drop your sine squared down, and then your cosecant squared turns into 1 over sine squared uh, because of the reciprocal identity. Uh, remember, the reciprocal identities are any time it's 1 over something. And then um, those cancel, so you end up with 1, and then we just drop down the equal 1, and so it worked out. Okay, so that was 32. Any questions? See, if you had done FOIL on that one, your last term would have been negative cosine squared times positive cotangent squared, which just sounds complicated. Because then cotangent would have been cosine over sine, so you'd have cosine to the fourth, and you'd get stuck. So that's, you know you would have cosine to the fourth, and that's just weird. So think about the other method. Okay, um, 36. Oh, by the way, um, here's a really good example. When we have sine squared and 1 over sine squared, um, going from here to here was called the reciprocal. But when you're doing this, like canceling out, that's called the cancellation property. The cancellation property is like when you cross out sines <coughs> or if you cross out cosines, you know. Uh, if you did like cosine squared over cosine and crossed out the two and the cosine, that's all examples of cancellation. So remember on your worksheet, um, you're going to have cancellation property, reciprocal, even odd, quotient, Pythagorean. So cancellation is when it just cancels, just kind of like common sense on that. Okay. So when they cross out. Okay, our next one is 36. Um, the next one says cosecant to the fourth theta minus cosecant squared theta equal cotangent to the four theta plus cotangent squared theta. So on this one, um, it looks like if you just look at it, um, both of them are to the fourth power and second power, and it changes from minus to plus, and it changes from cosecant to cotangent. So what we're going to have to do is factor out our GCF greatest common factor. And so factor out a cosine squared theta from it because that was in both of these terms. And so then we're left with cosecant squared minus 1. So again, just to check your work, cosecant squared times cosecant squared is cosecant to the fourth. And cosecant squared times negative 1 is negative cosecant squared. So that was your first step. Um, from there, uh, remember your cosecant squared x equal cotangent squared x plus 1. And so what we're going to do is just substitute. So this is substitution. We're going to change our first term to end up being cotangent squared x plus 1. So that's for your first one. Now, for your other side, again, we have um, subtract 1. So we get cosecant squared x minus 1 
equal cotangent squared x. And so that's going to go over here, again, substitution. So we're just going to end up having cotangent squared right there. I guess I put x. I need to put theta. Okay, so the left side changed to cotangent squared plus 1, and the right side changed to cotangent squared. The right term. I don't mean the right side of the equal. Yeah, my bad. So um, now you can kind of see how that's going to go together. If you do cotangent squared times cotangent squared, you get cotangent to the fourth. And if you do 1 times cotangent squared, it'd be uh, just cotangent squared. And that is identical to what we have over here. Whoops, cotangent squared. And so I just put a check mark. Uh, again, make sure you show work on these because um, you know some of the steps have to be written. So again, this is about reinforcing your algebra concepts. Okay, um, number 40, this one is 9 secant squared theta minus 5 tangent squared theta equal 5 plus 4 secant squared theta. So when I look at this one, um, I see a 5 and a 4, and I know 9 is 5 plus 4, and so um, how I would approach this is splitting this up, split the 9 um, into 4 secant squared theta plus 5 secant squared theta. So it's kind of like working backwards, split it up and then have minus 5 tan theta, or tan squared theta. And then from there, we're going to want to factor out a 5 from those two terms. 4 secant squared theta plus 5 parentheses secant squared theta minus tan squared theta. Okay, so believe it or not, Right there, you're actually very close. Because if you keep your goal in mind, on the right side, it has 4 secant squared plus 5. So we just have to get rid of this, and it really is just 1. So um, recall, or remember, whatever, that you have tan squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. And so if we move this to this side, you get 1 equals secant squared x minus tan squared x. And so this whole thing just turns into 1. So you have 4 secant squared theta plus 5. Um, I guess to be perfect, you reverse it. And that's called the commutative property. Reverse the order from 4 secant squared to being in the back. That's called the commutative property. And so then it equals itself, and so then it works. Any questions? Okay. Um, 44. Oh, okay. Sorry. I You're good. Uh, I just put 5 plus 4 secant squared equal 5 plus 4 secant squared. Okay. And check mark. I put commutative property. Okay. Um, next we have 44.
So on this one we have cosecant v. They're using v instead of theta this time. Um, cosecant v minus 1 over cosecant v plus 1 equals 1 minus sine v over 1 plus sine v. So uh, if you wanted to change it to x and then change it back, you know, that's fine. Um, just make sure in your math Excel that you use the right variable because they're going to count it wrong if you don't have the right variable. And again, on the calculator, if you do it, which you really can't do these on the calculator, uh, you'd have to use x instead. So um, anyway, on this one, the right side is already in terms of sine, so you can't do anything with the right side. Um, we need to use the reciprocal identity. And so we change cosecant to be 1 over sine. OK, so that was the reciprocal identity. And then from there, we want to get a common denominator of sine for each. What I mean by that is for this numerator, I need a common denominator of sine. And for this denominator, I need a common denominator of sine. It's a fraction, divide by a fraction. OK, so for our first one, uh, we have 1 over sine v. How we get a common denominator is we multiply by sine v over sine v. So <laughs> basically on that, um, we're going to end up with uh, just 1. You know, I have this, and now I just got confused for a second. Oh, um, I put my sine v in the wrong spot. Okay, so I should have said do sine v over sine v like that, like really large. Um, so multiplying sine times the top um, turns into 1, and then minus sine v. And on this one, multiply this sine v by the bottom. And so that turns into um, 1 plus sine v. Okay, very good. And then when we do that, then um, these two terms cancel. And that's what our goal was, because we have 1 minus sine over 1 plus sine. So this is 1 minus sine v over 1 plus sine v. And it worked. So it's basically uh, multiply by 1. OK, then we're going to have a very similar question on 48. <clears throat> and on this one, we have cosine theta plus 1 over cosine theta minus 1 equals 1 plus secant theta over 1 minus secant theta. So on all the other questions, we change the left side. But on this one, I really don't think it's easier to change cosine to secant. I'd rather work with the right side. And so I'm going to keep my left the same since it's already in terms of cosine. So I need to change this one to 1 plus 1 over cosine and 1 minus 1 over cosine. Again, that's called the reciprocal.
oops, reciprocal. Uh, and then we're going to actually do the same thing we did earlier about getting a common denominator. So we're going to multiply by cosine over cosine. And so when we do cosine times 1, we get cosine, um, cosine divide by cosine cancels. And then this is um, cosine times 1 is cosine. And then cosine divide by can cosine cancels, so we just get minus 1. Um, so it's basically that um, equal to the same size. Same thing. So then that worked. Any questions? Okay. Okay, our last one is number 52. <clears throat> and on this one, we have 1 minus sine squared over 1 plus cosine. Um, they're using theta for the variable and it's equal to cosine. So again, on this one, we need to change our left side because the right side is just cosine. There's nothing to do with it. OK, so again, if we've got a squared, like sine squared, we've got to remember sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And so sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So this changes to 1 minus 1 minus cosine squared theta over 1 plus cosine theta. So that was just from substitution. Uh, by the way, substitution is your most common um, first step. OK, from there you want to use difference of two squares. So what I mean by that is change 1 minus cosine squared to be 1 plus cosine theta times 1 minus cosine theta. So basically, um, factor you know, into the difference of two squares. <coughs> Um, think of this as 1 squared minus cosine squared. And so that's the difference of two squares. And so whenever you have the difference of two squares, um, you're going to have two things here that are the same and two things here that are the same. And one of them's positive, the other's negative. It's OK. All right, so then um, that step would just be cancel. So that's cancellation. And so let me rewrite this before I go too fast. I'm going to have 1 minus parentheses 1 minus cosine theta. And at this step, you want to distribute minus 1. And so we'd have to do this. So this turns into negative 1 plus cosine theta. And then these cancel out. Right. And so then we get cosine theta equal cosine theta, which is true. OK, um, that's the end of that lesson. Um, so the rest of the time, you could work on your worksheet and your math Excel. <laughs>